Let's talk about another web application development framework called Java Server Faces. What is Java Server Faces? Well, it's part of the overall J2EE or Java EE specification for developing web-based applications. JSF or Java Server Faces 1.2 is actually part of the Java EE 5. JSF 2.0 specification will be part of uh, Java EE 6, um, but we're sticking to the Java EE 5 specification. JSF is comparable in purpose and in goal to another uh, development framework, specifically web development framework, called Struts. Um, Struts came earlier. Struts matured independent of JSF. JSF came a little later in the overall technology history. But there was an early adoption and wide adoption of the Struts framework. And so when JSF was introduced, it was... Uh, common to compare both JSF and struts to see which gives you what benefits. The key differences between these two frameworks are um, the JSF specification is separate from an implementation, an implementation being the runtime environment. For struts, there's no separate specification. There's just an implementation or a runtime environment. So the um, standards and uh, for struts were never really formalized into a separate specification. Different server vendors may provide their own implementations of JSF. Struts has a single implementation, which requires developers to make sure that they're working within that one implementation so their code will work. So why use JSF? Why use Java server faces? Initially, when we were talking about Java web applications, there was only the servlet API and the JSP API. Um, building a rich application with a lot of functionality, especially around rich UIs, required an awful lot of coding, too much coding, um, and the repetition of the same um, common functionality, like, for example, where you have what they call progressive disclosure screens, where you're gathering information from a user um, in a next, next, next kind of way, where you're going from one screen to the next before they uh, click on finish, that kind of thing. There was no native or natural way within the servlet or the JSP API to provide navigational structure outside of uh, writing the code. When Struts was introduced, Struts comes along and it addresses a lot of these issues, um, significantly reduced the amount of coding necessary for uh, common uh, solutions such as validation, um, navigation, et cetera, et cetera. Struts still required, however, the knowledge of a full-scale API and um, Struts never uh, standardized and, and the uh, specification and implementation provide no natural way of creating rich input controls, you know, such as date picker, things that can be easily added to a page. JSF, to begin with, uh, minimizes the need to learn a new API. And for um, developers who are familiar with the Struts framework, JSF seemed to add uh, functionality and power to uh, struts. It seemed to be uh, struts with more UI-rich features. If you're starting as a web application developer today um, and you don't know struts, you don't necessarily need to learn struts, but the ideas of providing reducing the amount of code that you write for things like validation, um, providing um, a navigational structure that's configurable. Uh, this is in JSF, but it was also in struts. So right off the bat, JSF minimizes the need to learn a new API. You can write large parts of a, an application, particularly a web application, with just a little basic Java knowledge this, of course, frees the Java programmer to focus on the Java logic necessary to um, implement whatever the business logic is. Particularly when you're comparing JSF to struts, 
JSF offers a component model where rich input components, which are reusable, um, can easily be added to a page, particularly a JSP page. So historically, uh, Struts has been around much longer than JSF has, but JSF has matured quickly and is available as an implementation in most um, application servers, web application servers, and certainly any Java EE um, web application server. So what is the nature of a JSF application? It is like any other J2EE or Java EE web application. It gets packaged as a web module or a WAR file. It includes a deployment descriptor, web.xml, which we've seen in uh, other J2EE web applications. JSF specific configurations, however, are handled inside of a, an XML file by industry standard called the faces config or faces config.xml specifically. Because a JSF application is a J2EE application, um, JSF applications also have access to the JSF API and tag libraries um, as well as other tag libraries. Since it's a part of the core Java EE or J2EE, you shouldn't have to add any additional implementation or tag library descriptor files to your application. They should be available in the application server. So this is part of the excitement that uh, JSF and the JSF specification have now become part of uh, the J2EE or Java EE specification. However, some web containers may not yet be compliant with the JSF implementation you're looking for, so they may not be standards compliant. In that particular case, you might need to download an open um, and freely available JSF implementation, add its JAR files and the tag library descriptor files to the web application and possibly to the server environment. If necessary, you can um, investigate the Sun Reference Implementation, or RI, for JSF. You can download an implementation of JSF 1.2 from this URL that we see here for javaserverfaces.dev.java.net. Historically, developers have shared implementations and implemented implementations within their applications to work with the latest and greatest features of JSF. And this has caused a problem for uh, system admins who want to control the overall application server environment. Um, so be careful as a developer that you're not trying to make enemies with your application server system administrator or with your customers who are controlling their own server environment. Other implementations are available, as I mentioned. Um, you can install this other JSF implementation if uh, your application server does not come with any JSF implementation or you want to replace the entire JSF implementation that's built into the application server with whatever, um, whether it's Sun's implementation um, or others. I've seen um, for a while developers were using My Server Faces um, as their implementation and they ran into problems when the system administrator didn't want to add libraries to the overall server environment that may have to support many applications, not just yours. So keep in mind that whether you want to consider replacing the JSF implementation with Sun's implementation or with uh, something else that you found, um, it can be complicated as it may involve altering the actual base installation of an application server. In my experience, system administrators are not too happy um, when developers try to tell them to do this. How does JSF fit into the model view controller design pattern? In fact, JSF is based on model two or version two of uh, the MVC design pattern. For the controller layer, um, you have in the JSF implementation, you have something called the faces 
servlet, faces servlet acting as the controller in a JSF um, application. Java beans um, can be designated as uh, what are called managed beans. And in the standard Java bean API or the Java bean specification, when they're designated in a JSF application as managed bean, um, they can uh, be easily used within JSF. Developers generally write these uh, managed beans or Java beans specifically designated as managed beans. They're written in Java code. Um, if you've worked in the struts uh, framework, these were often referred to as action beans. In the JSF implementation, they take the place of servlets um, or struts, what are called actions. Uh, managed beans can handle user requests and can also be used to control the flow of a site, so the navigational structure of your application. In the view layer of a model view controller architecture, uh, JSF is, in a JSF application, the view layer is actually implemented as JSP pages that use um, specific tag libraries from the JSF implementation. Now, the model layer, JSF doesn't really uh, cover the model layer. The JSF specification doesn't cover the model layer. So you are free to use whatever um, model layer implementation you want. You can use plain old Java beans. You can use EJBs. You can use uh, Java beans. Technically, managed Java beans can also be used as what are called data transfer objects, which is a, another specification of Java code. So how does this flow um, with JSF and our model view controller design pattern? Essentially, a request comes from the browser, an HTTP request, and based on the servlet mapping in the WebXML, our URL requests are now routed to or mapped to the FACES servlet. The FACES servlet invokes a handler method on a managed bean, um, if necessary, invokes whatever business logic is necessary, and automatically forwards the request to a particular page. So what is this FACES servlet? Um, we keep speaking of. Every request for a JSF application goes through a servlet called the FACES servlet. Even requests for JSP resources are routed through the FACES servlet. In order to do that, the FACES servlet is declared in the web deployment descriptor just like you would any other servlet. And it looks like this. Um, the servlet element servlet name and particularly servlet class. This is your uh, faces servlet class. Usually, additionally, the URL pattern for faces slash asterisks is mapped to the faces servlet. So in our web XML, we see servlet declarations and we see servlet mapping uh, elements for the servlet declarations by their name. We also see in uh, WebXML the mapping for um, the FACES servlet. For example, in this URL, uh, a request for form.jsp in the FACES folder or the FACES context within my application um, would result in rendering. So the servlet mapping in WebXML would look something like this. And notice we have servlet mapping to the servlet name, and, and uh, that has to match what we define in the servlet element. And then in the URL pattern, it's quite common in a JSF application to see this URL pattern faces slash asterisks as the URL pattern for this particular servlet mapping within JSF. In some cases, especially historically, uh, the asterisk dot faces URL pattern is mapped to the faces servlet as well. You quite often see examples in the reference implementation um, that use this particular approach. So an additional servlet mapping in order to be able to request this URL form dot faces would be mapped in WebXML with the URL pattern asterisk dot faces 
attached to the servlet um, by its name using the servlet mapping element. Within JSF, there's something called a managed bean. What is it? A managed bean is, is a regular Java bean. It follows the same conventions as uh, any other Java bean. But in the JSF implementation, it can be used to execute some special behavior. A property of a bean can be associated with a form field. In other words, the field will display the value of the property from the bean. Also, when the form is submitted, any user input in those controls, in other words, fields, will be stored and updated automatically um, in the bean instances property. Manage Bean can also have event handler methods, such as uh, business methods that then can be associated with a submit button or a hyperlink. When a request is generated from one of these sources, JSF automatically invokes the associated event handler method, the event handler method having been implemented in the Managed Bean. A Managed Bean acts as a controller, so the Managed Bean is working with the um, server implementation of JSF. It would invoke any model layer business logic. It can also uh, control the page flow or the navigational structure of your overall application. So it makes a very compelling case um, in a model view controller architecture. If you're using managed beans, you have to register them in the faces-config.xml. An example of what that uh, particular XML code would look like is where we have a managed bean element. We give it a name. And by the way, uh, we're looking at this managed bean name, managed bean class. That's my Java bean class that I would have to write. And managed bean scope. In this example, they're using the request scope. Um, you can also use session scope. You can use application scope depending on where you want this bean instance visible within your JSF application. For the view layer, the screen layout is defined in a JSP file just as you would any other JSP file with the addition of specific JSF custom tags as well as uh, XHTML tags. Components on a page belong in a tree-like hierarchy. For example, form component contains a text box, which we traditionally see and we're used to with traditional HTML form tags. But in the uh, JSF implementation, we're using special tags, um, particularly um, the view tag. Uh, the view tag, everything that you want that you would traditionally put inside of a form tag for HTML on a JSF JSP, any component that you want uh, tied to the JSF component hierarchy has to be contained within a view tag. So for example, here we see um, a view element, open close view element, and then we see a form element within that view element. And within that form element, we have special JSF component, in this case, input box, okay? Let's take a look at creating a simple Hello World JSF application in Eclipse. Working with Eclipse and with the JBoss test environment, we can create simple JSF applications relatively quickly, especially when we're first learning. Uh, but then later as we become more advanced, uh, Eclipse has built into it a uh, lot of the wizards necessary for creating a simple JSF application or a complicated JSF application. So I'm going to create a new JSF application. Right click, New, Dynamic Web Project. Okay, and it's tradition, so this has to be Hello World. So I'll call the project within Eclipse, I'll call it Hello JSF. But the key piece in this, I've got my target runtime set to JBoss, five. Dynamic web module version. This is the specific, uh, or sorry, the specification for all of the web artifacts, servlets, JSPs, et cetera, et cetera. Now, the configuration 
that I'm going to choose. Normally I go with the default configuration for JBoss, but in this case I'm going to go ahead and use the wizard to set the configuration for Java Server Faces v1.2. So I'm extending the uh, standard dynamic web project by adding the facets and the capabilities of a JSF application to my web application. On the next screen, I just want to call your attention to a couple of things. Default where it's going to build my uh, files, that's fine. But on the third screen, uh, the little select option for generate web.xml deployment descriptor, I want the tool to go ahead and do that for me. It's also going to stub out the configuration elements necessary for JSF. On the next screen, um, you may see an error that says uh, JSF capabilities, at least one user library must be selected. This is where you would use um, the configuration if you were importing your own implementation of JSF. We're going to disable library configuration, and it's going to warn me, and you can you know, just look at the screen and say, yes, I know, I'm a highly technically trained professional. Um, what we're telling the, the uh, tool is that I'm going to rely on a server implementation for faces. So the JSF config file, servlet name, it's going to go with the defaults. So I can override them here, but um, I'm not implementing my own JSF extensions or my own JSF implementation libraries. I'm actually going to disable it. Otherwise, it won't let me uh, create this project. I have to specify uh, implementation. So I click Finish here, and I have a new project. Now let's take a look first before we do anything. Let's examine what the tool generated for me. Okay, specifically around the JSF. Uh, if I expand web content, I expand web INF, I, ex uh, I see that I have a faces config XML as well as a web XML. The web XML is what we've seen before with servlet and JSP applications. Um, we have a servlet element and we have a servlet mapping element. And the, uh, for a JSF application, we need to create a servlet element that maps to, or, 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 sorry, a servlet element that specifies the faces servlet class. This option here for load on startup means exactly what it says. When the uh, server starts up, please load this servlet into service, whereas normally a servlet is loaded, or the default value for load on startup is a servlet is loaded into service when it is first necessary. For faces, it's a good idea to have it available to accept faces requests uh, when the server comes online or when the application comes online, sorry. Um, then we have a servlet mapping element and a URL pattern um, to map to our faces servlet. And this name needs to match this name here. For all servlet and servlet mapping elements, this is how the mapping gets tied to the specific servlet. Um, with faces config, and with every file in Eclipse, we double click on it, we open it up, we go, yeah, we're looking at XML, yeah, we're looking at JSP code. Um, Eclipse, this particular version of Eclipse, if I open faces config, there's a fancier editor. It's one of the features of this version of Eclipse. It's a fancier editor for JSF, uh, for the JSF uh, faces config file. And so it's organized in a more intuitive way, very helpful, especially um, for me and other developers who have been doing this a long time. And I can't remember what all the options are for uh, managed bean or, you know, what are my scopes again? And this is actually giving me a more intuitive GUI uh, to manage what is essentially XML. So I, uh, when I click on the source tab, I see the XML source. There's nothing to add to um, just for our simple Hello World JSF application. There's nothing to add to this configuration. The tools um, put these config files in 
um, as required for the JSF specification. But I'm going to create a view, a view layer, a simple JSP in my application and watch how with, you know, just mapping all the requests through this faces servlet, um, I'm going to begin creating a, a JSF application with just the view layer at this point. I'm going to right click on the project, go to new, go to JSP file. I'll give it a very fancy name, hello JSP, um, or you can leave off the file extension, it'll put one in for you. Uh, because I chose a JSP file. Now in the template window, we've seen using the Eclipse templates for JSP file for HTML, JSP file using XML templates. But notice at the top, there's also a couple of templates, a couple, three templates uh, in this version of Eclipse for putting in uh, or creating a JSP that's going to work within a JSF application. And so you can preview these templates um, and choose the one that makes more, that, that, that matches closer to the skeleton code that you want um, in your particular JSF JSP. I know there's a lot of letters there, but we're talking about Java server faces JSP um, or a Java server page for JSF. The very first one uh, for our simple example um, gives us the basics of what we need, which is particularly the two core primary tag libraries that are used for JSF. And it also gives us our view. And, and we know that every control, every JSF control in order to um, function within the JSF implementation needs to be embedded within the view element. So this looks like the best template for me right now. I click on finish, um, except that my view doesn't really display anything. So I think it should display things. Um, I'm going to move my title into the view element, perfectly acceptable. So what we're seeing here is that within the view element, we can put HTML, XHTML, DHTML, um, and it will behave as expected. Um, we'll change the text to ins from insert title here to um, here's my, now notice the tool put in a close quote as soon as I typed one. Here's my JSF title. And inside of the view, there's actually two tag libraries. I'll expand this so you can see it. There's two tag libraries in the core JSF. There is JSF Core, and there's also JSF HTML. Whenever possible, you should use the JSF version of traditional HTML elements. And so instead of just writing out text, I'm going to use one of the JSF HTML elements. And this is quite common. As soon as I start typing with the H prefix as defined on my taglib line, I'm I see that the content assist help is helping me out. And what I want is uh, output text. And it puts an open close um, element tag in there. Now, this again is helpful to me uh, because I can't keep up with all the different variations. I mean, I could keep up with it because I know how to search for it. Uh, but the tool is actually helping me if I uh, click in the outline view on this element h output text and i click on the properties view down below and okay eclipse is not keeping up with me today but let me click on uh, our highlight output text um, in the outline view again notice what happens in the properties view the properties view is bound to this um, and it shows me all the different options or attributes for this element so I don't have to go look in a tag library. I don't have to quickly Google when no one's looking because I, you know, can't remember what the attributes are. And sure enough, there's a value attribute, and I can in this properties view set it to what? What do we have to do? Is tradition hello? Oops, I can't spell it. No, oh no, they're gonna kick me out of the club. Hello world. Okay, 
And notice um, in my JSP code, it set the value attribute equals hello world. Now I could change this to a self-closing tag because I don't have any body uh, content and that would be fine. So I can cut this, you know, a little cleaner. I have to put the close tag in and life is good. It, it gets upset until I put the uh, slash in there to make it a self-closing tag. Um, but uh, it should be good to go. So just like any other JSP, um, because this is a uh, JSF application, um, I can run it on the server. I can do a right-click, run as, run on server. Let's check the status of my server. I don't have any other applications added to the server just now. Um, I can uh, right click on the server and choose add and remove. Notice I have a couple of projects, simple web project, hello JSF. I can add one, remove them, and all this is doing is handling uh, which of my projects in Eclipse I want published to the JBoss server. I'm going to cancel out of this because if I right click run as server, this has the same effect because the first screen after a build is done, it should ask me Oh, it's not asking me. Oh, make a liar out of me. It should ask me what server I want to deploy to. I must have set the uh, server prop. Oh, I did. In the wizard, when I created the project, I assigned it to that server. Uh, so it didn't ask me which server. Um, it's, I notice it's added. If I go back to the server's view, it's added as a uh, project once I run it for the first time. In my console, I see that the project was built. In my server console, back on JBoss, um, I see that uh, the project was undeployed and redeployed. The Hello JSF was undeployed and redeployed. And I got a rendering of my JSF JSP. The title is in the title where I expect it to be and the content is written out to the JSP and what we used were a couple of JSF tags and we wrote a JSF application. Very simple but we see how the tool is creating faces config which is necessary under the specification how the faces servlet is mapped in web xml which is necessary under the specification and um and our simple jsp is using a couple of simple jsf tags particularly here view and uh, output text from the html core